Paratroopers of the 71st Brigade of the Ukrainian Armed Forces detected and targeted the R-934B Sinitsa radio electronic combat station belonging to the occupying Russian army in the direction of Kharkiv. The combat equipment was destroyed by the explosion of the kamikaze drone. Station 934B Sinitsa is intended for radio suppression of aviation VHF radio communication, tactical aviation guidance systems, as well as terrestrial fixed and mobile radio communication lines. It is stated that it can jam cellular and trunk networks operating both on fixed frequencies and in the mode of software adjustment of the operating frequency. The station can operate separately or as part of the Borisoglebsk 2 electronic warfare weapon system. The Russian R-934B was spotted in the temporarily occupied Donbass even before the outbreak of a full-scale war with Russia. The EW brigades are designed to provide wide area protection of critical nodes within a Russian formation. It can be task-organized to support certain operations or carry out tasks against specified complex targets. Russia-Ukraine conflict primarily focuses on using missiles, artillery, and aircraft. An invisible struggle between the two sides within the electromagnetic domain has been shaping the war significantly. Kim Jong-un sent 5 million shells to Russia, Putin once more. North Korea has sent containers to Russia that could hold nearly 5 million artillery shells and Russian President Vladimir Putin is likely to request even more during his visit to Pyongyang, according to South Korean Defense Minister Shin Won-sik. He said Seoul detected at least 10,000 transport containers sent from North Korea to Russia, which could contain up to 4.8 million artillery shells, similar to those Putin used in the war with Ukraine. Putin is expected to seek closer security cooperation with North Korea, especially military supplies, such as artillery shells that are necessary to seize a chance to win, Shin said. He also mentioned that North Korea sent dozens of ballistic missiles to help Putin attack Ukraine. In exchange for the ammunition, Russia sent North Korea technologies that will assist in its plans to deploy numerous spy satellites as well as conventional weapons like tanks and aircraft. Putin is set to visit North Korea as early as next week. This will be the first trip since July 2000. The ammunition sent by North Korea after the meeting between Putin and Kim in Russia in September likely far exceeds what the US and European Union have sent to Ukraine. This has allowed Kremlin forces to attack Ukraine while it was forced to ration ammunition due to depleted supplies and delays in aid from the US Congress. While Ukrainian officials have raised alarms about the threat of a Russian breakthrough during months-long delays in American weapons supplies, Kyiv's troops have mostly held the defense as Moscow's invading army outgunned them by nearly 10 to 1. The European Union has sent Ukraine 1 million artillery shells. Meanwhile, Kim is spending significant funds on his missile program. According to Shin, missile tests last year cost about $1 billion. This figure represents about 4% of North Korea's economy, which South Korea estimates to be around $24.5 billion in 2022. North Korea is ignoring its people's hardships to carry out missile provocations. The money is enough to cover North Korea's food shortages for a year, Shin said. The US State Department previously reported that North Korea had sent Moscow more than 10,000 containers with ammunition or materials related to ammunition since September 2023. India, Sri Lanka, Nepal demanded Russian government to return their citizens recruited by its army. The Indian government has asked the Russian government to return the Indian citizens recruited by its army with Foreign Secretary Vinay Quatra confirming the request. This follows the death of two Indian citizens in the ongoing Russia-Ukraine conflict, as announced by the Indian Ministry of External Affairs. The Indian Embassy in Russia has further asked for early return of the remains of the deceased. Other South Asian countries like Sri Lanka and Nepal have also requested the return of their citizens following reports of Sri Lankan and Nepali citizens fighting in the conflict as part of the Russian army. 
Sri Lanka maintained a large army over the past 40 years because of a long civil war which ended in 2009. Every year thousands of soldiers retire from service. An unprecedented economic crisis since 2022 has forced many people to seek jobs overseas and there have been widespread reports of human trafficking and cheating by fake job agents. Nepal is also seeking monetary compensation from Russia for the families of those Nepali nationals who were killed in the fighting. Russian officials have not commented on the recruitment of foreign nationals for military service in Ukraine, but media reports have said that along with Nepal, the Russian military has recruited some people from Cuba. Russian law allows foreign nationals to enlist in its army after they sign a contract with the Defense Ministry. The full-scale war between Russia and Ukraine, ongoing since the Russian invasion of Ukraine two years ago, has resulted in around 18 Indians being stranded in areas near the Russia-Ukraine border. Some Indians in Ukraine alleged that they were conned into joining the Russian army after being recruited as army helpers, but later had their passports confiscated and were forced into fighting. However, an official at the Russian Ministry of Defense stated that about 100 Indians had been recruited with full consent and were informed about the risks. It was also further claimed that the workers were paid for their service.